God's Word tells us over and over to forgive, but why does it seem so hard to do? You are not alone in your struggle to forgive. With the book, You Can Get Over It by Rick Renner, you'll learn how to walk free of the negative attitudes that have kept you bound and bitter. The devil would like nothing more than to keep you down in unforgiveness and misery. Don't let him. In this book, Rick Renner describes how life change comes from a heart change. Jesus understands your emotions, frustrations, and temptations, and still calls us to forgive because it's freedom for you. Walk through the 10 powerful steps to keep your heart free from bitterness and strife. Forgive and see a breakthrough in your health, finances, and relationships. Don't let the devil have a stronghold in your life. No offense is worth sabotaging your future. Pray the prayer of forgiveness in the back of the book and thrive in a bitterness-free future. Start your journey to a life of forgiveness with Rick Renner's book, You Can Get Over It. Get your copy for £8.50. Outside the UK, call for postage. Order online at kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01-225-787-310. Be empowered by God's word and find out how to make the quality choice to forgive and receive the good things God has for you. This offer is good for 30 days. We are so glad that you joined us for this edition of the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Pastor George Pearson's here, Pastor Terry is here, and we are so thrilled that we are going to be able to bring the Word of God to you today. It's a privilege, it's an honor, it's a joy, and it's fun. It's fun it to be on this it side is. of the camera, yep. and then we just, we see you on the other side of yes. that camera. We don't yep. see massive groups of people so much as we just look through that lens and we see you, because that's what God sees. God sees you. Amen. And the word that we Amen. have today is a word for you. Yep. Isn't that marvelous? Yep, Only is. God can it arrange really that. Yes. that. This is a word for absolutely everybody listening. Yep. And the kind of thing that we've been talking about all week long applies to each and every one of us, no matter how many times you've heard it, if it's the first time or the hundredth time, it doesn't matter. We can always grow and these wonderful things of yes. God, especially when it comes to talking about forgiveness. forgiveness. And we've been on a two-week journey. This is the end of the first week. We're going to start next week and continue Continue. It. We're taking the time to become developed, really to renew our minds to what it means to walk in the forgiveness of God. We'll renew our attitude. There, in our <laughs> attitude as well. There's so much... <clears throat> there's so much progress we can make in that area. And it's so important because it has everything to do with the development of our faith. How our faith develops really relies on how willing we are to be able to forgive others, to receive that forgiveness. And so today, we're going to talk about a subject um, that is so important to discuss, and that is called radical forgiveness. Radical forgiveness. Radical, man. <clears throat> radical. Radical. And I want to start out with a quote from Mark Hankins, who is pretty radical. radical. He's pretty radical. He says that the radical kind of forgiveness that God extends to us is the same kind of radical forgiveness he expects, expects us to extend to others. That's a really great statement. Radical forgiveness. It really sounds impossible, but thank Thank God that we have a radical God. Yeah. So he didn't ask us to be like him without himself stepping yeah. in to, to give us of his nature, to give us his word, yeah. to give us his spirit so that we can be a partaker yeah. of his divine nature and that divine nature is love. You know, we talk about, Terry, here at the ministry in a church especially, uncommon faith walking in an uncommon faith. Well, this radical forgiveness, this really is an uncommon forgiveness because there are people, people that'll say something like, well, I forgave him, but I'm not gonna forget it. That's not forgiveness. That's not forgiveness. That's a very low, low <laughs> level. <laughs> That's oh, one foot in, one foot that out. Is, that is not it no. at all. No, what we're pressing into is a radical forgiveness that absolutely cleans the slate, clears the deck, and helps us to build our faith. Yeah, as far as your own heart is concerned. Yeah. Yep. And that, that's a, it's an art and a talent, and it's developed. It takes patience, not only patience with other people, right. but also patience with yourself. Yep. I tell you, you know, one time, George, I, I was not pleased with 
um, the way I responded to somebody. Mm. Uh, somebody else observing might have thought I did pretty good given the set of circumstances, but I wasn't happy enough with my own self, and I was really beating myself up over it. Yeah. But I talked to my dad because yeah. I was feeling low, and he said, Terry, he said, self-evaluation in the presence of faith is a good thing, but apart from faith, it becomes condemnation, and that's demonic. Yeah. So there's a balance in all of this, yeah. and that balance is God's love to us along with God's love through us. Yeah. And both have yeah. to be working at the same time. Let me read this scripture to you. This is Luke 17, verses three and four, the Amplified Classic. Uh, and as I'm thinking about it, these, these notes are available to you, especially this one, Radical Forgiveness. Just go to kcm.org slash notes and you'll be able to download these absolutely free. And a lot of resources and materials, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, things for free, things yeah. you can purchase. Because these, this is the kind of thing that it's like, this is a lifetime objective. It is. It is. Luke 17, verses 3 and 4, Amplified Classic. Pay attention and always be on your guard, looking out for one another. If your brother sins or misses the mark, solemnly tell him so and reprove him. And if he repents, feel sorry for having sinned, forgive him. Now that means... That means he doesn't want you to ignore the situation. A lot of right. people try to walk in right. love and do it alone. And really love, love. there's a lot that you do within yourself between you and God. Mm -hmm. But love moves towards people, not away from them. Now, let's just take this apart for a moment. He says, you solemnly tell him and yeah. reprove him yeah. or show him the mistake here but you have to stay in love. You have to check your motive. You have to check your own love walk. Yeah. You have to see to it that you're endeavoring to get things worked out to their benefit mm -hmm. and that you're not just trying to get even yeah. and, and, and be prideful that you know everything. You approach people in a spirit of humility and a spirit of love, knowing that you not only maybe uh, could have missed it, you probably did. Yeah. Yeah. You could have easily heard wrong, been too touchy. Uh, you may have done the very same thing to that person and not even realized it, or maybe you know you did. Right. So Jesus said solemnly, that means you need to be thoughtful about this and not, you know, some things are just not worth bringing up. They're just not worth it, really. Let them go, forget about it, don't know that this would save many marriages. Just forget about mm -hmm. it. You mm -hmm. can't pick on somebody all the time. Right. Your love walk is to let it go. But there are some things that if they are never confronted, never talked about, then, then they prevent you from being able to move forward in a relationship. And God wants relationship to be restore, yeah. restored. Yeah. It says if he repents, then you can move forward. And you may have to repent as well because you aren't perfect. We often judge people, what? We judge them by our own intentions, but we judge them by their actions. We judge them by what we hope they thought, right. or we judge them. Sometimes we, we really do have a stinky attitude underneath, but we say all the right things. And we expect them to listen to what we say and not the feeling that's coming through it. It gets very, very convoluted. So you have to be sure of yourself first that your heart is clear and your motives are right, yeah. and then be willing to hear them out. But then, George, what do you do if they don't? What if mm. they say, oh. well, you're full of it, sir. I don't even know what you're talking about. You yeah. blah, blah, yeah, blah, yeah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah, 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 yeah. blah, and that happens. Yeah. Other times, people just huff and puff and walk off. Sometimes it can be somebody very close to you, and they just they just lose their temper even farther, uh, further. rather. <clears throat> so what do you do? What if he doesn't uh, repent? Luke 6, 27 says, you have to love your enemies. So when somebody, that doesn't always just mean somebody that's enemy like they want to kill you, yeah. uh, alone, like that, that far gone, but even somebody that's on the opposite side of the, of the view, opposite side of the problem, opposite yeah. side of the viewpoint. Yeah. They're, it's different and there's contention and they've hurt you or offended you something in some way to what do you do 
no matter what they do or don't do, what you do is that he said, love your enemies, do good to those that hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those that hurt you. Mm. A lot of times, if you'll move over into a place of not just forgiveness, but forgiveness in action is to pray for them the way you would if they had done nothing against you. (laughs) Pray for them, for their blessing, for their prosperity, for for God to help them and to ask him to help you be better towards them and let the the Lord then begin to work. But no matter what, you have to release malice. You have to release anger and hurt. It's a beautiful thing, and you can see it worked out both ways in a courtroom. You see it sometimes where somebody, maybe their loved one was murdered. And one person will say, may you rot in hell. And then another person would say, I forgive you, man. Yeah. I forgive you. And I hope you turn your life around. Mm -hmm. So that person will go away justified no matter what the murderer did. Yeah. But the person who can't let the malice go, even maybe they deserve the sentence that they get. But they can't let that malice go, and they hold on to it, and that, that bitterness of heart seemingly justified, mm. they do that, then they're going to walk away with the same condemnation they've cursed that other person yep. with. It just yep. it comes back around that way. So when God tells us to walk in love and forgive, he's trying to get help to us, mm-hmm. not just yep. to that other person. I remember one time your dad said this. This was very good. He said, sometimes you have to love people at a distance. Love them at a distance. <laughs> sometimes you do. Sometimes because of them. Yeah. Sometimes because of you. Sometimes because of both of you. Yeah. And you you have to. It's like the teacher but, separating the two in the class. That's right. That's right. <laughs> You'll cool off. Yeah. And, and don't don't go approaching somebody to show them how wrong they are while you're fiery mad about it. Yeah. That's ju- that's just not very smart. But let cooler heads prevail. Ask the Lord to help you yeah. and let go of that And bitterness. don't be spreading it. Don't, yeah, don't be, be yeah. that, that, telling everybody. That becomes the topic of conversation in people's lives. Ask me how I know. Mm. We've been there. Yep. We've done that. Big mistakes. And we still have to ride herd on that one. And to be very, really value relationships. I think we're talking here yeah. now about relationships. Value them. Relationships are, par- are just precious <laughs> in God. Yeah. And they mean a lot to God. And so valuing relationships enough to know when to let that go. It doesn't matter. And then other times when something really pushes your button and it may be something really serious, but you really know that relationship is not one you should let go of, then don't let go of it. Jesse, Jesse's like that. I'm thinking about right now when Jesse was going through that with the media about his airplane. Yeah. And the media was just coming down hard on him. And he he makes a beeline to them. I mean, he he runs right to them, and and he he thanks them for uh, the attention that That's is right. given to Thank him you. because Thank there you. are people there are people that saw Jesse and his airplane on the news, and they wanted to give to it. And so Jesse, I won't name the the news outlet, but Jesse thanked was, one I of the news. I think it was oh, I think it was all of them. <laughs> <laughs> he thank, he, but he didn't get upset and he didn't get mad at him. He, he turned it around. That's another level. That's a radical forgiveness. I, listen, I know of a, one relationship. This is really sad, but I, they were so angry over at each other over the slightest things. I remember hearing them. This was actually family members, not my close family, but I heard them and they, such unforgiveness over who drank the last of the orange juice. Yeah. You know, go buy more orange juice. Get a his jug and her jug if necessary. Whatever yeah. it takes, but to, to be, yeah. let things like that rob you and equally dangerous are those little things that you don't forgive, let go of on purpose. They build up until you just explode. But you want to know how to prevent an explosion? Is to let it go every time. Let it go yep. when there's a little thing. Yep. Mostly annoyances. And you don't think about needing to forgive someone for being <laughs> annoying. But it's a lot of the same thing. And then you need to look in the mirror and say, I need to not be so touchy and so picky. And there's no telling how many marriages and close friendships and working relationships, people have lost their jobs because of silly things that they let build up and blow up. Things that look so big to you today, you practice these kind of things 
And later on, you realize it wasn't so big. Big yeah. deal. Yeah. You can get to the point, even racial slurs and things like that. You know, okay. People say, well, you are you don't have racial problems. I really haven't had any kind of racial pressures, but I have been, mm-hmm. I have been, I had smoke blown in my face. I have been uh, taken in a chokehold working in, in television. Yeah. I have been pushed up against the wall. <clears throat> I've been laughed at, disregarded. Not by staff here. I actually have had, at that time, at that time I had staff that, paid no attention to me as, because I was a little younger than they were and because I was female. So there's opportunity no matter who you are. You're not as smart as somebody, not as good looking, not as wealthy, or, or maybe because you are wealthy or because you are nice looking. Who knows? People will find a way to express discontent uh, for you because of something about you they don't like. But you had to learn to let those things, it's just... It's not important, and you love them anyway, and you look through that. And the moment you begin to cut other people off is the moment you can't help them anymore. And that should be our objective, is how can we still show them love? And a lot of times you can't get close enough to people they're so angry to show them love, Mm. but they can feel it when you're not angry. They feel it when you don't hate. And they, they know there's something different. And even in their heads, if they don't recognize it, Jesus knows, and he will use that seed to bring forth or attempt to bring yeah. forth a harvest in their life. That's right. This radical forgiveness is 1 Corinthians 13, 5 in the Amplified Translation. Love takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It's true that some unrepented wrongs prevent a whole relationship from moving forward, but as for you... You can hold on you to the offense. You, you can't. You can't hold, hold on, on to the offense. offense. Yeah. You can't, yeah. you can't yeah. do it. You've got to let it go for your sake, but also by letting it go, you help them. Yeah. And your children and everybody that's watching yeah. you. Exactly. Create an atmosphere. Exactly. You know, you're one of the most loving people I know. You create a real atmosphere, a lighthearted atmosphere. You're joyful and you're fun to be around. Uh, I've, I've learned to push those buttons to, to <laughs> press, press you more than anybody else. But, you know, you're always really kind and you're both quick to forgive and quick to repent. I appreciate that about you. So, well, I try. <laughs> yes, you I do. do. You I do. really do. And, and I appreciate it. Yes, you and are. We, we have a good marriage, don't yes, we? Yes, we do. Thank you. Yes, sir. There you uh, go. Okay. Yeah. Where are we going? Now, let's see, you are going. so deep into this now. <laughs> Peter said, at one point, he asked the Lord, he said, how many times do I have to forgive him, Lord? Now, tell me again how many that is. Yeah. G- <laughs> and, uh, he said, look, seven times seven. I think I can do seven times seven. And Jesus said, Peter, no. this is, this. you got to get past the point yeah. where it's uncountable. Seventy times seven, 490 times. And I'm sure if Peter had encountered somebody at that many times offended, Jesus said, well, right. add, add 70 times seven more because it's a lifestyle, a lifestyle. of forgiveness. Yep, yep. And it's here. you've got here in Psalm 103, to bless, this is Amplified Classic, bless affectionately, gratefully, praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not one of, the, not one of all his benefits who forgives every one of all your iniquities. I, I, I know I'm talking a lot on this broadcast. That's okay. It, it's, you've so I'm resting. You, you're so inspired I'm me. I'm in rest. But then he says, uh, gratefully praise the Lord and forget not his benefits. You know, one of the things that's, that I remember helping me when we were young married couple, and that is listing the benefits. Mm-hmm. Change your focus. Mm-hmm. Change your attention. You know, the, the yeah, but is a wonderful phrase. It can be, yeah, but, in a negative way, or you can say, yeah, but, in a positive way. So some little something happens, or maybe a big something happens. What do you do? Yeah, but you know what? I remember when. Yeah, but that relationship means so much. Yeah, Yeah, but I made a commitment. Yeah, but I've done that same kind of thing before. Yeah, but I understand. 
yeah, but I, I, I know what they've gone through. Yeah, but they haven't heard the things that I've heard. Yeah, they've never had anybody teach them like I have. Yeah, they're not as accountable as I am because I've, I've heard so much more. Yeah, but I'm older. Yeah, but all those, yeah, and you count and you bless them for the, the things you count their benefits. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Gratefully, yeah. don't forget his benefits yeah. and every good thing that's in somebody else came from God. Lord, you've benefited me through that person. <clears throat> Even if they were just awful, say, well, you know what I've learned something about? I've learned not to be that way. Somebody said to Brother Hagen one time, you'd say something nice about the devil. And he said, well, well, he, he, is, a, he is a sorry cuss, you know. <laughs> that's about the worst you'd ever get even about the devil. Because he just didn't, he yeah. just didn't go down yeah. Yeah. letting his thoughts emphasize yeah. that, that yeah. part of people. So I, I, the Lord gave me three examples of radical faith. And I want to take a few minutes here to talk about them, like two minutes of peace. Yep. peace. Um, first of all, in Job 42, 7 through 13, and I won't read all of those to you, but Job had a radical faith uh, or faith, forgiveness. And, um, it took him a while to get to it, it. It really did. But in verse 8, it talked about, my servant Job will pray for you and I will accept his prayer on your behalf. I will not treat you as you deserve, for you have not spoken accurately about me as my servant Job has. So Job, it says in verse 10, he prayed for his friends. He prayed for his friends. He released that. He let it go. He dismissed the, the, uh, the offense that was on him about these people. He let it go and listen to what the Lord did. The Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. So that's what happens. And, and, it, I, and that flow of forgiveness, George, it moved him out of bitterness that he had even towards the God, over yes, the Lord. Yes, over the Lord. He was mistaken yeah. in thinking the Lord yeah. had caused him his trouble yeah. and he was bitter and, and I, you could analyze all that, but the main yeah. thing God got him his mind off himself onto loving yes. other people. Yeah. And when he did, his fortunes were restored and he got his healing. It affected his prosperity. Yeah. To walk in forgiveness affects your prosperity. Do you see the connection between forgiveness and everything else that we do? So we see here that, that uh, I mean, verse 12, so the Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life even more than in the beginning. For now he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 team of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. And Look, then Joseph. And then Joseph, yes, thank you. Joseph's radical forgiveness. His brothers sold him into slavery. He was falsely imprisoned by Potiphar. He was forgotten by the chief butler, whom he helped. And I wrote here, how could you blame him for being bitter and resentful? But but he wasn't. He wasn't. Um, we found out, where is that? Uh, behold, um, okay. Talking about Joseph, they sent messengers to Joseph saying, before your father died, he commanded saying, thus shall you say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brothers in their sins, for they did evil to you. Now please forgive the trespass of the servants of God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. And then his brothers also went and fell down before his face and said, behold, we're your servants. And Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, for I am in a place of God. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. He was in a very desperate family situation and that was radical forgiveness that, that Joseph operated in. He forgave his brothers. He did. He forgave now, he his was, brothers. He was very watchful to see where they were coming <clears throat> from. Yes, but yes. even before yeah. he knew for sure yeah. that that they had repented of their horrible actions, yeah. he forgave them. He wept over them. He wanted to bless them and help them even before uh, he knew for sure right. what, that they had had a right. change of heart. And so he forgave them. He released it. He let it go. Yes, he did. He let it go. You know... Um, Ephraim and Manasseh, or is it Manasseh and Ephraim? Is it, which one? Anyway, the two sons, mm -hmm. Joseph's two sons. Um, what they, basically, their names mean you've got to forget the past in order to move on to the future. 
In order for you to bear fruit, you're going to have to forget the past. And that's, that speaks to us in terms of, in order for you to move forward, you are going to have to forget the past. You're going to have to forgive. You're going to have to let it go. You're going to have to dismiss those things that have been said or done against you to be able to move forward. Finally, Jesus, radical forgiveness. <clears throat> in, in Luke 23, 32, uh, it says, two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on the left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. That's the ultimate forgiveness. Talk about radical. Right there. Radical and forgiveness. And in that moment, he, he had such love that it went beyond yeah. that moment. Yeah. Throughout, covered every person throughout all yeah. eternity oh. that would look and, and receive that forgiveness would have a change in their life, a change That's in their right. very innermost being. You That's know, right. Pastor George, this, you've got a scripture here yeah. for our our yep. offering and, and how it is tied into all a of this. short amount yep. to tell That's it. Right. But this one, this is Matthew 5, 23. So if you're presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice at the altar, go and be reconciled with that person, then come and offer your sacrifice to God. So you can see, wow. you can see how wow. important that it, for, for your sacrifice to yep. be, or your gift, your offering, and not only at the church, but the things you do for the Lord, why, how will they count if yes. they're not offered in love yep. and offered in forgiveness? Yes, so you can talk a whole week on that, yes. but we just have these few moments. So, so you're offering at, this week. Yes. This is offering, offering week. week. <laughs> we almost forgot our, <laughs> offering our day. opportunity here yeah. to be a part of supporting yeah. the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast and all that we do here at Kenneth Copeland yes. Ministries. We want to open the door for that and ask you to ask the Lord and just do what's in your heart and, and do something to really help move this message of faith and love to other people. You can give online, you can give by texting, or you can call us. All that information is right there on your screen. We receive what yeah. you give yeah. in faith. We yes. receive it by love and believe that the blessing of the Lord yeah. is on that seed of That's faith. Right. And we, we, are, we have lots of room for more finances to come in because there's a lot we That's plan right. to do. And before you give, just take a moment and say, Father, yes. I forgive. forgive. Whoever, Thank whatever, you, I wherever, forgive. I forgive and say this, I receive my forgiveness yes. for what I have done to someone That's else. Right. This is radical That's forgiveness right. we're talking about. And for you and your gift to be able to work to its fullest, we have to walk in that total And you may want to give a gift as a, as a show to the Lord Absolutely. that I am forgiving by faith. Glory so remember to God. this. Jesus is, is Lord. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Watch the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast free on kcm.org.uk or KCM's Roku channel. If you would like a free copy of the broadcast to put into your faith library, you can download it on kcm.org.uk straight to your computer or mobile device. Keep your heart full of the Word of God and continue to grow in faith. Every believer has a voice, and it is the voice of victory.